Hey guys, Mark here. Today, i got a little video for you about Hobbywing ESCs. Um, so, you can see here I've got two of my larger helicopters on the desk. So recently I finished building my Bell 206 back there, and I'm currently using a Hobbywing Pentium Series 80 amp speed controller in it. Um, and it works fine, I've been using it for a long time. Um, it's one of my most trusted speed controllers, and that's why I decided to use it in that helicopter. Uh, well, the thing is, is after installing in the helicopter, being all enclosed up here inside the fuselage, because um, you got windows, there's not a lot of airflow in there. So it's getting a little bit warmer than when I had it on a uh, traditional pot and boom style helicopter. So I decided to go ahead and upgrade it to something a little bit bigger, um, but also more importantly, something that had cooling fins on it. So that way it helped dissipate the heat a little bit better, you know, being stuck inside the fuselage. Um, and you know, now that's a hobby wing speed controller. I've been using hobby wing speed controllers since I started flying. Uh, one of the first ones I've ever used was uh, my first collective pitch helicopter. I had a Belt CP, um, and the stock E Sky 25 amp ESC caught on fire, uh, which they're known to do. So I replaced it with a hobby wing speed controller that I got from KA Planes, and it worked great. I loved it. Um, you know, it was a great price. Uh, it, the performance of it was great. Um, it lasted for a very long time um, until I actually ended up selling the helicopter. So, you know, and when I just, you know, as I kept going on, I just kept buying, you know, Hollywood speed controllers. I've always had great luck with them. Now, I've tried some of the other speed controllers out there, some of the other value brand speed controllers that you can find, um, and some of them work okay, and some of them really don't. Um, I've had a Dynam speed controller catch fire on a 550 size helicopter and that was uh, pretty catastrophic. So because of, you know, my mixed experiences with, you know, the speed controller, I, you know, I just, I try to stay with the Hobby Wing speed controllers. Um, I just, I trust them, you know, they've been, always been great for me. Uh, they have great pricing on them, you know, they're not overly expensive, you know. Um, and so when I was looking online to try to find a replacement, um, I came across a new place that I've never seen before, uh, and that's why I kind of why I wanted to you know tell you guys about uh, this company called Falcon Sekido. Now it turns out they're the official U.S. agent for Hobby Wing speed controllers, uh, so that's really important because that way when you buy a speed controller from them, you know you're getting a genuine Hobby Wing speed controller and not a copy of it or a clone of it. Uh, now their products when you buy them uh, when you buy their speed controllers, they have an anti counterfeit code on it, so you get a special code on the package as well as the speed controller and on the warranty card because uh, speed controllers when you buy them through Falcon Sekido um, or any of their networks there uh, they have a 90 day warranty on them against 90 day uh, manufacturing defects and stuff like that now that's in addition to the hobby wing warranty so that's just you know really cool that if it happened to have a problem you don't have to worry about trying to get a hold of the manufacturer because these guys will take care of it right then and there. Um, but, you know, again, you're not likely to have any problems with it. So, you know, I went to their site, you know, and I, you know, like I said, I bought some speed controllers and they actually had a sale. So, I, you know, I bought a couple of them uh, because this, you know, they were cheaper than what you could buy them at Hobby King in China. And most people know that they have some of the cheapest pricing out there. Um, but, you know, to buy a genuine Hobby Wing product from California you know, cheaper than what I could get the copy of it for. I'm like, it was just like, you know, no brainer. It's like, yeah, I'm ordering me some speed controllers. So now I've got the speed controller I'm going to need for my Bell 206 here as well as some of the other ones. Um, so I just wanted to make a quick video about it. Now, this is the Hobby Wing Platinum Pro Series. Uh, the Platinum Pro Series uses a program box. Uh, they actually have uh, like the Pentium Series that I use in that. That one uses a program card which I don't have here with me. Uh, the program card will not work for the Platinum Pro Series. And you can see here, like this one is blue, because uh, a lot of the Platinum Pro Series are blue there. Uh, so I just wanted to show you real quickly how to go ahead and hook this up um, to both this one. Now this is a 150 amp ESC, uh, but this is the Opto version, so this does not include a BEC. So that's why I got all these wires back here. Uh, this is a BEC that I've had to wire into it. Uh, but now this one does include a BEC, so when you hook them up to the program card, it's going to be a little bit different between the two of them, but it's still very simple, so I just wanted to show you that real quickly. Um, but again, uh, you know, like I said, you know, Falcon Sekido, check them out because they have great pricing, 
on the speed controllers right now, uh, but you're buying genuine products so you're going to be able to know that you can fly with confidence and not have to worry about your speed controller failing on you um, because that's not something you want to ever have to worry about. Uh, so real quick, let me just show you how to hook you all this up. Okay, real quick, I just want to go over a couple differences between these two speed controllers. Um, so now this speed controller, this is the Hobbywing 100 amp Platinum Pro Series speed controller. This one has a built-in BEC, a battery elimination circuit. Now this is the 150 amp uh, Platinum Pro Opto Series. This one does not have a built-in BEC. That's why you see this part wired into here. Um, this is the BEC, is a separate BEC, and this provides power to the receiver. Whereas this one would provide power to the receiver through this plug this speed controller does not provide power through this plug that's why you have to wire in your own separate BEC um, so that's what the main difference is here now also on these bigger speed controllers the new ones from uh, Hobbywing here you can see here this wire now what this is this is an anti-spark wire and I'll show you I'll demonstrate this here in a second with these bigger speed controllers when you go ahead and connect the battery you usually get this really nasty spark on the battery on the terminals here um, but with this little anti-spark thing, if you disconnect this wire, plug the battery in, and then connect these two wires, you don't get that really nasty spark uh, that you usually do when you plug in one of these big batteries. Um, now the other thing you see here is on this one, uh, some of these bigger Hobbywing series, they have two wires coming off of them, whereas this one only has one. Um, so when you hook this to the program card, now this one, a lot of them that have just the one wire, on the side of the program card where it says ESE, that's where you're going to plug in that, you know, and then you'll connect this to the battery, and that's it. But on this one, this long one, you don't use. This one goes to the receiver. You use the short one to plug into the receiver, or to the program card. And then you have to plug in the BEC on the side here. And then now we can go ahead and plug the battery in here. And See here, I'm just going to plug this in and then connect the wire. And you can see here, I didn't get any nasty spark. And you can see here, my program card lights up. And if you go through and you read the directions, or your program box, you read the directions for the program box to tell you everything you need to know about operating this um, and read the directions for your ESC. And this will tell you everything about your uh, the different values that you can select and stuff like that. Now the great thing with the program box is not only can you program your speed controller, there's a, on certain uh, speed controllers they have customizable values to where you can actually go in and change like uh, the cutoff voltage for the speed controller. Now it's got three preset settings but you can actually go in there and change it to a customizable setting and set the cutoff voltage for whatever you want. You know, and that's very easy to do. But the other thing that's very cool about this program box is you also get little uh, CDs with some software and USB cable because you can update the firmware inside the speed controller. So if they come out with some new software for your speed controller, you can go ahead and update it using the program box. But it's very simple. You can see here when you press the button, it'll connect to your ESC, and you can go down and select different settings. And if you change something, so you can go custom select, low, middle, high. You, if that's what you want, make sure always make sure you hit OK. It'll save data OK, and it'll tell you that. And then you can go ahead and select different things here. Um, but again, all the actual you know descriptions of what the functions are, go you know go through, read the manual. I'm not going to go through that. Um, but, you know, I just wanted to show you about connecting this up. And then when you're done with it, you just go ahead and unplug the battery and then go unplug this. Now, to show you what happens if you plug this in without, with that wire still connected, watch. See that little snap? All right, now if we disconnect this. no snap and we've got power so that's a cool little feature about these new speed controllers that I definitely like because I do not like that big nasty spark because sometimes it's not too bad and sometimes it's very very bad um, so that's just really all I wanted to show you about programming this with the box there like I said 
the instructions tell you exactly what every you know different value you can set actually does it's very simple um, and that's really all you need to know so I hope you found this helpful and talk to you guys later